Alright, welcome back to SoFlo TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Mm, what a something. You know, Philip Paulwell, you dodged a bullet. Philip Paulwell dodged a bullet. If his woman is truly involved in this, this is the kind of person that will kiss you goodnight. I love you, babe. Mwah. I love you. Mwah. Good night. And then leave the back door open to your house and trip the alarm system, turn it off so a gunman could come in and kill you in your sleep. You stay there. If this person orchestrated or is behind this, that has to do with the murder of a 10 month old child and the child's mother, simply because of their association with you, that you're the father of the child and then want you all for themselves, this is the kind of person that will set you up to get killed. This person's level of possession is on a whole nother level. This is narcissism. Now, anyhow, let's get into the newly updated information concerning this, and we'll talk more about the case, and I'll give my opinion as we go ahead. Shout out to everybody tuning in. Thank you for being here. Leave your comments in the comment section, and I will try to answer as many people as possible, although it's impossible to answer all people, because you know by the time we finish this video, we're on to our next one, right? The work has to be done. All right, Leota Bradshaw, let that name marinate. Leota Bradshaw, the mother of one of Philip Caldwell's children, is facing charges in connection with the abduction and the suspected murder of another one of his intimate partners. I like this headline, I like this opening. One, one baby mother responsible for the death or the disappearance, kidnapping of another baby mother and the child over there. I like how the Jamaica media is very careful still to not associate her so close as to use a term like common law. They're just baby mothers. Hmm. I wonder if, there, is that, if that's what it is and that was the arrangement. Anyhow, 27 year old. Tashina Patterson and her 10-month-old daughter, Soraya Paulwell, gone. Police still looking for them. Yesterday, somebody sent me a video. Them said, blood, fire, so flow, you know, see this. How come you didn't talk about it yet? And it was an article out of Jamaica about at the foot of Warica Hill, two badly burnt corpse bodies were found, burnt beyond recognition, burnt out. And they're saying that this could very well be the mother and the baby girl. We have no proof of that yet. And when we get confirmed proof from proper sources, we'll come out and say that too. But, of course, it's gone to the media and everybody is saying it's them and they found the bodies and they're burnt out. There hasn't been any confirmation yet, okay? According to the latest developer, developed or the latest release information, this is what's out. At the same time, widely reported claims that two burnt bodies were found in the Rock Fort area in Kingston Friday afternoon. Those have not been confirmed by the police up to press time or up to the time of this information being put out this morning. Y'all saw that video yesterday for the people who saw that video. It has not been confirmed. Bradshaw was taken into police custody. Every time you hear the name Bradshaw, just know that that is Philip Paulwell's other woman who we can call common law wife or whatever, because they've been dealing for what, eight years or something like that? Okay, we can call her. So once you hear Bradshaw, just know that that's who we're speaking about, right? All right, Bradshaw was taken into custody late Thursday, way in the evening. And on Friday, Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP Fitz Bailey, confirmed that she was a prime suspect in the abduction of the two and that she would face charges. I told you all yesterday, the information they released was that they will be, this is not my wording, this is how they word it, they will be charged. She will be charged, right? with kidnapping and murder. Those are the charges that they're working with. Those are the charges that are going to be laid against uh, um, the people who are involved, who are being arrested and held in custody right now. He said that three men believed to have been involved in the abduction of Patterson and her daughter 
have also been taken into custody, but it is Paul Wells' longtime partner, Bradshaw, who works with a law enforcement agency in the United States of America, who Bailey was willing to name. Hmm. Um, you work with a law enforcement agency in the United States of America. You know, sometimes I think these people might think that Jamaica, she probably thinks that Jamaica, their level of investigating a case is not up to par. She probably thinks that uh, they're behind the times. If we can pull this off without them finding out, we can pull this off without them catching us. So that's a message for law enforcement in Jamaica to include the investigative branches and all that. They think you are a clown. They, she don't think you can do your job and catch them. She works at a similar entity, but in the United States of America. And we all know that the United States of America has more resources to solve their crimes and they have more boots on the ground and they have more technology and more access to more technology and all these other things, right? And more trained individuals to execute these things. So they're undermining Jamaica like, me can't come here, come commit murder, and I bet you them can't catch me. We think that in the case of Miss Bradshaw, we have evidence that we could advance a case at this time. In other words, they have enough evidence right now to charge her right now. But they're not in a hurry. This is what they're saying. We're not in a hurry. We want to ensure that every every I is um, dotted, every T is crossed, and so that there are a number of things that are ongoing, and so we want to ensure that those have come to a conclusion before we proceed with the formal charging of her. This is DCP Bailey speaking, who said in a video release from the Jamaica Constabulary Force yesterday evening. Now, according to Bailey, DCP Bailey, the police are looking at charges of kidnapping and conspiracy to murder and other charges against Bradshaw and the three men who are now in custody. I have a problem. You know, they charge the person who plans the murder. I notice this in Jamaica law. The person who plans the murder, that person gets less time than the person who actually executes the murder. See, in the United States of America, things are done a bit different. If you planned that murder, you are getting just as much time as the person who you used to execute that murder because you are very much a part of the act of the murder, especially if you are the mastermind behind it because without your plan, it would have never went into action. You understand? Right. So I don't think that she should be charged if she is uh, indeed a part of this. I don't think she should be charged with just kidnapping and conspiracy to murder. She should be also charged with murder if indeed they are murdered. Tell me if I'm wrong or right. Right. So the evidence that we have right now, he said, is very, very strong. And we will allow the administrative procedures to be concluded before we make that determination as there are legal issues that basically prevent us from saying much more. So obviously, they have a whole lot more to say. And I gave you an example yesterday. I said when they were looking for Donnelly Donaldson, Noel Maitland, they couldn't just pick Noel up and say, oh, she was last seen with you, so you killed her. No, they had to go on a little investigation. They had to go find out if indeed there was foul play involved in her going missing, right? And then they started doing their research. They started doing their investigation. They found the neighbor camera that was trained on his door area, which would show who came and went. They saw footage of her going in, but no footage ever existed of her coming out, which means something happened to her inside and she was brought out in a way that was disguised. Remember the couch came out? Remember that same couch then went to a car wash? And the amount of blood that was coming out the couch as described by one of the persons at the car wash that was watching it and the person said that the blood smell raw that's fresh blood smell raw and the amount of blood and when he asked Maitland well damn how much somebody must be dead in a this culture and he said no man I'm cousin was doing some work and cut him hand and the person said why if him cut him hand the hand that cut the muscle body must be dead from it cause this amount of blood 
And then they went back to the apartment and they found more blood and blood splatter here and blood splatter there. And they went and tested the blood. DNA results came back. It is Donnelly's blood. She didn't go into your apartment injured and bleeding. She went in perfectly on video camera looking normal. She just left her mom's house. Her mom could attest that you're the one that picked her up. And that my daughter left here with not a scratch on her. She was fine. She said, Mommy, Miss soon come back. All that. Right. So how come she's in your apartment bleeding? Something happened. Do you see how the pieces have to fit together in order for them to make a case? So this is what DCP Bailey is saying right now. Chill out to the public. Watch us do our thing. We're on it. And we have strong evidence that we could even advance a case and charge her now. But we want to make double sure and absolutely sure that when we lay that charge, all the I's were dotted, all the T's were crossed, ain't no escaping this, right? And that's where they're at with the case right now. But I'm convinced that we are on the right track, he said. I'm convinced about the quality of evidence that they have, about the potency of the evidence that they have, okay? I'm convinced when I look at the material, that the evidence we have garnered so far is very strong and can stand up to any scrutiny in any court of law. This is DCP Bailey speaking. And then he went on to commend the JCF members who are conducting the investigations. Big up to them too, because you know how it go already, right? Bradshaw first commented of the abduction of Patterson and Lil Saraya, Saraya on Sunday, September 10th in the media release and a subsequent interview with the Jamaica Observer in which she denied having anything to do with the disappearance of the two. This is Bradshaw again, Philip Powell's woman. I said, anytime you hear the name Bradshaw, just know who we're talking about. Bradshaw first commented of the abduction of Patterson and Little Saraya on Sunday, September 10th in the media release and a subsequent interview was done with the Jamaica Observer in which she denied having anything to do with that don't call my name. She was even threatening legal action to sue people, take legal actions against people. Hmm. And you know, people are afraid to be sued, especially when you seem like somebody who have your money and you can probably break my platform down just by sending a good powerful lawyer team at my platform or other people. So we're careful about what we say and how we say it about these people because they can be vindictive. People be guilty as hell and they still go get a lawyer to fight you and to tear you down and charge you with stuff like, um, you know, assassination of their character and they can go to court and say how your comments affected their income your comments affected their family, home, life, and all these things. This is why we over here, we not, we not play with this. We make sure we take it from what was already published, vetted by like the police department, right? And the proper news media houses, the big ones. And then we break it down from there. All right. The only interaction I have had ever with Miss Patterson is through a brief Facebook exchange. This is what she said, right? Bradshaw, when she first came out, she says, the only interaction I have ever had with Miss Patterson, the woman who's missing, was through a brief Facebook exchange. No other time. I have never spoken to her by phone, nor had I made any arrangements to meet with her. Any such reports in social media are lies and will be passed on to my lawyer for action to be taken in the days ahead. That was her statement, quote unquote. I have shared all the information I have with the authorities and I hope their investigation will lead to the safe return of Miss Patterson and her baby girl. Bradshaw, this is her. She later told the Jamaica Observer that claims Patterson received a call from someone purporting or pretending to be her. So on the me caller, she received a phone call from somebody pretending to be me and saying that they wanted to meet the baby. And that call, she said, should be investigated. I have never spoken to this lady. I have never spoken to this young lady. 
we have never met how do you pick up yourself and why would you meet with a stranger you don't know Bradshaw added as she noted that reports were that Patterson was picked up in a gold van by a male driver who was wearing dark glasses she said she got that from reports that were put out the first time we heard her speak we hadn't seen that report anywhere else and the first thing we said to ourselves is well how would she know that the, there was somebody in the van that was wearing dark glasses because the cousin's report was that the it was tinted up and she couldn't see who was inside so who else would have known well she was saying she got it from a report somewhere I've never spoken to this young lady never met up with her and how do you just pick up yourself pick yourself up and why would you meet with a stranger you don't know hmm why did you mention my name my information is not public knowledge this is her this is how she came out right why did you mention my name my information is not public knowledge now in outlining in outlining the sequence of events that were surrounding Paulwell the member of parliament for Kingston East and Port Royal who sits on the opposition benches in the legislature Bradshaw said in May she's talking about Philip Paulwell her man this is his woman Bradshaw she said in May their eight-year-old daughter that they have together was sent some sexually explicit photographs which were later followed by some email threats and extortion attempts she said the matter was reported to the fbi i know i wasn't tripping i know i saw it i know i read it and here it is again she said that the matter was reported to the FBI. This is the part where I started to say, well, maybe she's not involved. Because if she works in the U.S. and she works in law enforcement or with some form of military or law enforcement entity and she is involving the FBI, you can't be that slow. You cannot be that slow. You really underestimate the FBI's ability? The FBI? I said, nah. She got to not be involved in this because if I was involved in any way, I wouldn't even mention people like that. That entity is a powerful entity. You understand what I'm saying? And once they get involved, oh yeah, they go to the bottom of it. They're going to find out exactly what happened. Are they involved now? I don't know. If they're not, I think they need to be. She said the matter was reported to the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the Broward County Sheriff's Department Internet Crimes Against Children in the U.S. So she reported this incident to four entities, all four powerful entities, which later reported the matter to the Jamaican authorities. The threats against our child continued for months as the authorities investigated, this is what she said. She also added that on Sunday, September 3rd, an email was sent out making threats that personal information of Philip Paul Wells would be released to the public. You know what? I'm starting to think that that personal email that was sent out about them having Philip Paul Wells' personal information and they were going to release it to the public, I'm starting to think that this all ties in to that mm -hmm. this uh philip paulwell sure says that this woman was trying to extort him for money mm -hmm. all ties into this because look at the sequence of events and how they happen remember philip paulwell said he is not giving in to any um extortionists he ain't paying no money to no extortionists right i spoke to philip she said and he confirmed according to bradshaw on tuesday September 5th, she received an email indicating that Philip and Patterson had a child together. So I spoke to, e to Philip about it and he confirmed. He confirmed that they had a brief relationship with Patterson and that it is possible that the child is his. But he's not certain yet as a DNA test had not yet been done. Now, through our conversations, right, I asked the audience yesterday 
Is it possible still in Jamaica for a woman to just give the child anybody's last name? Or does that man have to come sign off on that child's name, right? Because if it's possible and that's the way it's done in Jamaica still, then that simply means that she could have named the child Paulwell by herself. The name of the little 10 month old girl is Paulwell. Philip Paulwell is Paulwell, right? Her mama's name is Patterson. Usually what's customary is when a woman has a child and she doesn't want to give the child the husband, or not the husband, but the baby father's last name, she usually ends up giving the child her last name and her last name comes from her parents, right? Right. So just the fact that that child is na named Paulwell, you see where I go with this? Just the fact that the baby is named Paulwell might have angered the shit out of her. Because she's like, nah, you know about this baby a long time ago. You keeping a whole, that's a whole family you building over there, right? That's a whole family you building over there. A woman scorned and jaded. Nah, you went and signed paperwork to put your friggin' name on that child. Don't tell them about no DNA. And you did it before a DNA. Most people will be like, yeah, let's do the DNA first. When the DNA come back and it says it's my child, then we can put my name on her birth certificate, right? And let's get the DNA done right away. Not no, the child has my last name. I signed my paperwork. I said this is my baby, but now let's do a DNA. That kind of, seems kind of backward and counterproductive. All right. She said that this was the first time that she heard anything about Miss Patterson and that child. She, I found out when y'all found out is what she said, right? She said that she sent Patterson, the missing woman, a message on Facebook Messenger advising her that Philip Paulwell had opened up to her about their relationship, their involvement, and the possibility that that child that she has might be his. Oman, she and Philip, Miss Patterson, who you met disappear, allegedly, she and Mr. Philip Paulwell already know them lucky like this. They already know that that's his baby. Them already compare the fingers and the toes and the nose and the face and the, all that. And if you put the baby next to him, it look like him too. But that's a whole nother story because Jacket can look like, <laughs> Jacket can look like you too. But they're locked in. So you over there confronting this lady talking about, I sent her a message um, saying that Philip had exposed or opened up to me, disclosed or opened up to me about his involvement with you and the possibility that the child might be his. I advised her that Philip and I, Philip and I would ensure that the child is taken care of financially and that the DNA test would be done to ensure that Philip was the father of the child. So this is a woman that's taken authority, right? I ensured that, so, this is a relationship, y'all can read between the lines. This is a relationship between Miss Patterson who is missing with the baby girl and Mr. Paulwell. Although Mr. Paulwell is your man, Miss Bradshaw, or has been, you're just as much a baby mother as the baby mother that he has now that's new. So you should excuse yourself. You don't step in and call for DNA tests and all that. The man says his. Right? And now she got Philip over there feeling confused. Oh, well, you know, we never did a DNA, but um, pending DNA because he has, he has to keep home happy. Right? You, come on, we're all Jamaican people. We're Caribbean people. You think your woman is going <laughs> to... People need to look at stuff logically. You think your woman, you there with a Jamaican woman, you there with a Caribbean woman, and you think your woman is going to look at you and be like... um. I heard you have a baby with Cynthia. You want to tell me about it, hon? And you go, well, babes, you know, <laughs> we did do a little entanglement shortly. I apologize. You know, it's one of those things. And the baby might be mine. And she goes, okay. No feathers ruffled. I'll go call her. I'm going to make her know that things will be okay. You think that's how it really went? This is how she was trying to sell it to the public, right? But now we understand that she was neck deep in it according to law enforcement investigation. She was neck deep in it. And of course she was trying to divert all attention. I'm telling you right now that that whole part 
shortly before Philip Paul went child and her mother Pattison went missing, that extortion attempt. Watch and see if that's not all tied into this. It is. It ain't no people coming at him from many different angles and it could be anybody. This shows premeditation. Somebody sat down and thought, how could we murky up the waters before we commit this act? I may mean, dash sure that girl there now, but may I try to figure out how to dash our way and make sure so it don't lead back to me. So, first we have to make it look like they're under threat. They're under siege. Attacks are coming from different angle. Pornographic photos are being sent to our children's devices. Phone call threats, text message threats. They want a ransom. They now have hacked his device and they want a ransom to release or they'll release all his information to the public. Boom. They can't catch him because he has a security detail and he is a top politician. So they caught his child and her mom. And that's what this is. That's what they wanted us to think. I guarantee you that extortion attempt and so-called breaching of the phone information, um, his online information and threatening to release it to the world, I bet money it all had to do with this case right here. Anyways, she said, as can be seen from my exchanges with Miss Patterson, there was no anger, but just a genuine wish to see that an innocent child is taken care of and not caught up between two parents no longer in a relationship. She said, I will continue to work with the local and the U.S. authorities to get to the bottom of the threats against my family, and particularly our daughter. I will continue to pray for the safe return of Miss Patterson and her baby and ask anyone with information to contact the police. You know what's crazy? What's crazy is, how DCP Bailey is saying the amount of evidence they have right now, they could actually just go straight ahead and charge. But he wants to seal this up. He wants to make sure all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed. Nobody can take this to court. And he said that the evidence he has, he can argue it with anybody in any court. And it will stand up. It is that damning. Some people are saying, what them have then, car? Them not say nothing else yet. What are they supposed to say? You understand that this is a murder investigation? Uh, technically, this is went from a missing persons case to what now looks like a murder investigation or a double murder investigation. That's what this is maturing into. And then there will be charge of murder and kidnapping and all these other things. That's a very serious case. That's a very serious charge or some very serious charges. So they have to take their time and tiptoe through the tulips and make sure that everything is right. Right? Given ex Also, listen, I'm thinking to myself, we were saying yesterday that I wonder how much Philip Powell actually knows. I wonder how much he actually knows. You know, at some point, I'm thinking he, he must have said, Ross, Claude, you know, say so she do it, she have something to do with it. But this is the part now where we have to be human, right? And be like, do you run out at this point and go tell a police or tell your investigators or tell some top police officer because he is a top politician. So he has direct access to top police officers. Do I go tell top brass about this and my suspicions or do I sit back and just see what's going on? Because here's the struggle. Either way it goes, right? He has an eight-year-old daughter with Bradshaw. And now Bradshaw is being arrested, Bradshaw is held, DCP Bailey is saying there's strong enough evidence to charge and even move forward from this point with a solid case. And the charges are going to be conspiracy to murder and kidnapping, kidnapping and conspiracy to murder and so on and so forth. What's going to happen to my eight-year-old daughter? She's going to watch her mom go to prison. I'm going to have to raise this child by myself for at least the next 20 years, hypothetically speaking, right? So he's caught between a rock and a hard place. Now he's got to think, damn, she might not be around to raise my daughter. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to be thought about right here. And then of course you're thinking, 
do I really want a person like this raising my daughter though? Because she was, she killed my other child and the mother. Whether she did it by her hands or she orchestrated for somebody to do it, it was done on her watch with her meditation. This is a wicked woman. Do you really want her around? I would say now is the time to take your child and run, sir. Yeah? And honestly, I wouldn't even let my child know until she's an adult. We would have to go have a funeral for the mother. And say, yeah, mommy passed away and we cremated her and, you know, explain to her, make sure mourn or something. Me no know. But I couldn't tell her at this young age, eight years old. At eight years old, she won't have the brain capacity to deal with my mom just went to prison. She's locked in that building over there. She can't come out. She won't have that to deal with. She won't have the maturity of mental space to deal with that. So you have to go concoct a story now, where did mommy go? And you have to do that to protect her mental space. And then when she is old enough to where you think she could understand, you could slowly lean into it and be like, this is a situation, this is what happened. You know, you had a sister, y'all didn't have the same mom, but y'all had the same dad. As you grow older, you will find that's a common dynamic around the world, right? In many different cultures, straight across the board. There are many people out there who have the same mom and then dif different dads or the same dad, different moms. You had a sister that was like that. And your mom got rid of your sister and her mother, right? So the way she did it, the law decided that they were going to punish her. And as she gets older, you can really explain to her like, look, your mother wicked. She killed the little girl that was supposed to be your sister as well. She had my name on everything. Soraya Paulwell, right? Your name is Blinky Paulwell. She was Soraya Paulwell. You had a beautiful little sister. She dead. And that's why your mom is in prison. But right now, that's a struggle for him too. That's a struggle for him too. Though I think that he was a part of... Somebody said yesterday, Soflo, you know, thinks that he was a part of the whole thing. Like him help our planet. He probably said to her, you on the side. You are on the side. So you better stay up on the side. And don't let my woman at home find out about you. Because if she do, and you mash up my family and mash up my political career, I'm going to make sure you disappear. That could be a theory. But for some reason, I don't think he was involved. He seems shocked. Philip Powell seems shocked. He genuinely seems out of it. He seems stuck like a deer in headlights. Don't know if he should go left or right. Don't know what he should do next kind of thing. He is contemplating. He is like, damn, I love this woman. We have a child together. That woman I had feelings for her too. We have a child together over there. She got rid of her. Now I'm going to watch her go to prison and my daughter being raised by herself while I'm grieving my other child being missing, gone, murdered, disappeared, dead. And it's all because of her. Hmm. He doesn't know what to do next. I think at some point he found out. Or he, not found out, but I would say came to the realization. Came to the realization. See, this woman, Bradshaw, she can go to court and freak Philip Paulwell up. How? How you ask? She could be vindictive and say to herself like this. I'm going to prison already anyways. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Philip down with me because if it wasn't for him stepping out of our relationship and swinging him teely wheely over Deso and Yasso, we wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. So this is what I'm going to do. May I go court. When I go court, I testify, I'm going to implicate him in it. Me and Philip planned this together that we were going to get rid of her because we have too much to lose. He has too much to lose. He's a prominent politician. He is of the upper echelons of society in Jamaica. He has a lot to lose. And as much as he acknowledged that and, and we knew about her, we wanted it to remain just that, not go around broadcasting it. But she decided she wanted to broadcast it. So me and Philip orchestrated for her to disappear, sadly, with the baby. And the thing about this is, we planned it in such a way that it would not come back to Philip because he has a lot to lose, right? 
So I did most of the work. That is why I'm now caught up in it. And he looks like he's distanced from it. But I'm telling you, me and him plan it. If she ever go to court and said that, if she goes to court and says that, hmm? big mansion bundong. <laughs> Anyhow, listen, we're going to continue to follow this case. It looks like it's going to be a sad, Ross ending. I'm looking forward today to the reports to come out about the burnt bodies found at Warica Hill, um, Hillfoot or something like that. Uh, to be exact, it says at the same time, widely reported claims that two burnt bodies were found in the Rockford area of Kingston Friday afternoon. And that has not been confirmed yet by the police up to press time. Uh, I think it was confirmed by the police that two bodies were found, but no one confirmed that if the bodies were two females, a 10 year old or a minor, then or a baby and a woman. So we'll wait for that information to come through. Some people are still saying we're praying that the mother is found safe and that the child is found safe. But I'm telling you that DCP belly them would not be saying they can push for conspiracy to murder, murder and kidnapping charges. They wouldn't be saying using the word murder if they didn't have enough evidence to say murder occurred, killing occurred, them dead. Hmm. Sad friggin' state of affairs, boy. Sad. You know, Jamaica is like a, it's like a Netflix series that somebody, somebody needs to write out a script here and film it, get actors and play roles and sell it to Netflix. Because every day we look up is a new thing. And I'm trying to wonder, like, where the hell did we go wrong as people? Your man have a side chick with other baby. So you kill the woman and the baby. I'm wondering the persons who she hired to do this, if that's what happened, if that's what happened, how do you look at a 10 month old and, you know what, let me just leave this video right there so y'all man, because we ask these questions all the time and we can't get no answers. Because this is going to go now further down into where was God, eh? You know, I pray to God to save the little 10 month old, where was God? That 10 month old didn't hurt nobody. How come God couldn't save the 10 month old? And then the Christian church people are going to come in. Well, God said this and did that and the other. All me know is a sad, sad state of affairs. Have a wonderful weekend. My love you know, respect, walk good. But think about your actions, please. When I see, you all see how I say every time we end the show now, I say karma is real and it never misses an address. It's because I want people to start thinking about their actions before they execute them and i want you to also understand that when i say karma is real karma is rotted real i've lived it i know when i'm getting whooped and i go through the weapons because i know what caused it be conscious of your existence maybe this way we can stop hurt people can you know them say hurt people hurt people i'm out peace